Okay guys, in the previous tutorial we have seen how to manipulate and save a portion of the PDB file that is a molecular assembly by using VMT. Specifically, we ended up saving the aspartyl uh, adenosine 5' prime monophosphate that's AMO bound to aspartyl tRNA synthetase that's ASPRS in a PDB format. However, we still need to change the AMO or aspartyl 5' prime adenosine monophosphate to L-aspartic acid and subsequently modify the stereoisomer L-aspartic acid to D-aspartic acid, so L-asp to D-asp. However, these can't be attained in a direct manner by BMD. So in this tutorial, we will learn how to edit molecular structures using the UCSF Chimera program. We will begin by deleting a fragment of the molecular structure for pre-processing, followed by modeling the stereoisomer. Our model system remains the aspartyl tRNA synthetase or ASPRS and we will specifically be modifying the ligand that's bound to ASPRS that's AMO to L-aspartic acid first and then changing the isomer of L-asp to D-asp. So let's look at the program UCSF Chimera. I have it already installed here. You guys should see an icon on your Windows desktop like this. So if you double click on this, this will open up the program UCSF Chimera so this is the interface and just like vmd you go to file and then click open so it will ask you the directory where you want to open the structure from and as i said previously i already have a workspace one folder created inside which i have saved the previously modified structure by vmd which is amo underscore asprs.pdb so i'm going to select that and open it here and just like VMD, you can see the background, the default background is black in color. However, the structure now, that is the enzyme structure or the protein structure that you have of ASPRS is represented already in cartoon. So that's pretty handy. So we have this alpha helices here and this beta sheets here. And you have this binding pocket where the AMO is bound. Another interesting thing about Chimera and very handy as well is that you can literally hover over any part of the molecular structure and it will show you which residues are involved in forming that structure, that part of the structure. So in terms of the ligand, if you just hover over the ligand structure, you'll find that the residue name here already is AMO. We'll just go ahead and change the background of this representation here. That is change it from black to white again like we did for the vmd so in order to attain that there's a shortcut and there are specific you know templates of representation that you can access from the preset menu on top so let's go ahead with publication one silhouette rounded ribbon so as you can see the background is changed to white now and we can clearly distinguish between the different elements or the different molecular fragments of the structure so for structure editing, we'll just focus on the ligand here, that's AMO, that's phosphorylated aspartic acid. You can just scroll in and then zoom into the structure if you want, just like VMD. Okay, but before doing that, let's have a look at the binding site of this ligand, that is the residues that are involved in binding. You might already know from the slides that I've posted there uh, that the binding site majorly constitutes of residues 171, 195, 198, 217, and 448. So we'll just highlight these residues and then uh, show them in a ball and stick model or, you know, in a licorice kind of model, just like the ligand is shown here. So in order to do that, we'll just go to select and then residue and we'll find a bunch of residues being listed here. So the first one itself is AMO, followed by the standard amino acid residues that are there inside this protein structure that belong to the protein structure spe uh, specifically, that's ASPRS. But however, we cannot pinpoint towards any residue by their number. So in order to attain that, we'll again use a command line interface and it's very easy language so you don't need to worry about it at all it's not at all complex language it's very user friendly and as we speak any kind of language so it's almost like that so in order to attain that 
you know, to highlight the specific residues that are involved in the binding site or the active site domain. We'll just go to favorites and you'll find in the third option, the command line interface. So you just click on the command line and it will show up a command box here. So we'll just type, let's say we want to highlight the first residue, which is residue number 171 that belongs to this binding pocket. So we'll just type select hash zero. Now you might ask me why hash zero. So hash zero stands for the model number. So you can see if you're loading one model out here, that is one structure from a file out here, that is represented as the first model and the numbering given to that is zero. And if you load another model on top of it, that is another structure, let's say I go to file, open, and then I load another structure on top of this one, that will be loaded as model one. So in order to specify which model we are using, of course here it is just one model, but still we'll be using number zero, that's for model one, followed by a colon, and that should be followed by the residue number that's there in model one, which is 171.a. So a, as you remember, is the chain ID here, okay? And as you hover over the uh, residues, specific residues in the protein, you'll find that the same chain ID is also uh, represented, is also shown here and the same kind of uh, uh, syntax is followed in the representation that is the residue name followed by the residue number dot the chain number or the chain id so select hash zero that's for the model number colon 171.a and i press enter so you'll find here faintly this loop region has been selected but you can't make out anything out of this like it's it's just a loop and it's being highlighted in green that's it how about if you want to see the side chain of these residues we go to actions we go to atoms and bonds and then show and you'll find that the, for the selection for the subsequent selection that is 171 the side chains of these residues are shown as well in addition to the backbone so that's pretty handy by using the same method in the command line, we can also represent the other residues uh, contained in the binding pocket. So rather than typing each one of those residues time and, uh, time and again and then pressing enter, what we are going to do is we are going to follow this by an OR symbol. So this is OR, O-R, OR, which is a logical operator that's being used to represent this or that. And if you have an AND operator, that uses the common uh, elements between the two groups. So if I have an AND here, it will basically select the common residues between the two domains or the two regions. So OR means it will select 171 and also model number 0, residue number 195.a. So you see, two selections are highlighted here and then another residue of the binding pocket that's hash zero followed by the residue number which is 198.a and then hash zero residue number 217.a okay so we have four residues in the binding site that we can represent out here together. So if we press enter again, all of these residues will be highlighted, as you can see. We're gonna select uh, a few more residues down the line as well, which are in the other side of the binding pocket, which of course is part of the binding site. Hash zero, 448 dot A, and then hash zero, 489.a <clears throat> excuse me so you see a few other residues are selected down here as well in these regions so we're going to represent all of these as a side chain that is if we again go to action click on atoms or bonds and then show them you see these residues are shown clearly if you want to change the representation 
of the residues will go to actions again in atoms and bonds click on ball and stick then you'll have a ball and stick model you see how these residues are actually pointing towards the ligand here that's AMO so those constitute the residues of the binding site additionally if you want to color these atoms by atom types then you can directly go to actions and then select colors from there and then you see there's a whole bunch of option for colors there's single color monocolor and then you have an option saying color by element which is basically the atom types so you click there and there you go you have all the carbons colored in gray and all the nitrogens colored in blue and all the oxygens colored in red and if you want to further change the representation of these binding site residues to let's say a sphere so you go to actions atoms or bonds and then click on sphere so there's a lot of different representation just like VMD that you can operate on and uh, work with chimera okay so the main focus of this tutorial editing the structure of the ligand that's AMO so we're going to change the AMO to L aspartic acid and in order to attain that we'll just focus on the AMO itself and just let the other molecules that's the protein and the binding site residues and everything else out of focus for the moment that is we'll basically hide it so since this selection is already here so based on the selection we can hide the selection so we can go to actions atoms or bonds again and then click on hide so you see all these side chain residues are gone further but you still have these selections intact okay in order to get rid of the selections you can either go outside anywhere outside in the background and outside the structure and just click once that is left click on your mouse button while holding the control key on the keyboard so press on the control key and then click once you see they're all gone now no more there the highlights are not there anymore so we'll begin by highlighting the whole of the protein and then hiding this protein so that this molecule only the AMO is in focus there's no direct way to do that so we'll use an indirect way so we'll first highlight the AMO which we can do by going to select and then residue it's very easy so just click on AMO and it highlights the AMO in green and then we'll do a reverse selection so that it selects everything except the AMO which is already being selected here so you'll see that in a minute so go to select again and if you go down then invert selected models if you click on invert selected models the protein will be selected and the AMO will be deselected so there you go so you see the AMO is deselected and the only highlighted part is the protein itself so now we are going to hide it we go to actions again and then we go to atoms or bonds and we click on hide and it still has this structure intact because none of the atoms or bonds are highlighted that is the chains uh, the side chains are not highlighted here in the atomic representation but what is highlighted are the ribbon representation or the new cartoon representation that like we call in VMD language so in chimera language this is a ribbon representation so we go to actions and as opposed to the atoms or bonds we now go to ribbon and then hide it click on hide and there you see the ribbon representation of the protein is gone however a hiding a structure doesn't mean that it's gone forever from this molecular uh, uh, PDB5 it's just that it's not shown in focus it's still there somewhere but it's very handy since we want to operate on this and we'll do random selections of uh, different atoms and fragments by you know dragging along this uh, key here uh, by dragging along the mouse pointer or something like that so in when we do that sometimes it's possible that the receptor in the background might also get selected so in order to avoid that we just hit the receptor firstly we are going to bring this molecule into a bit more focus by scrolling onto the mouse wheel so as we can see it's coming into a lot more focus we are zooming into the structure AMO 
Now we're going to translate it a little bit. So the translation operation out here in Chimera is basically you hold on to the mouse wheel. That is, you click on the mouse wheel and you see a dragging uh, kind of uh, uh, symbol appearing there on the screen. And you drag along and you see the molecule translating in the X direction and the Y direction there. So we're going to bring this to the middle and release the mouse wheel there just rotate it a little bit so all the atoms and everything the connections and the bonds are visible properly and we are going to select this molecule again okay so one thing that you have to keep in mind is that uh, although we are only displaying this uh, ligand here AMO the rest of the molecule is still intact so you have to take care of the fact that every time you do some operation on this molecule uh, you have to uh, highlight it so that the selection is highlighted onto this molecule. So we go for select and the same manner we select the residue and then AMO. So you see that's being highlighted again. We are just going to change the representation again to ball and stick. So we go to actions, atoms of bonds and we pick ball and stick. So you see beautiful ball and stick representation with the atoms represented in ball and the lines joining between two atoms that are the bonds represented in stick so okay so let's go through the molecule a little bit like atom by atom so you see here when we move from the right to the left of the molecule you see here this is the part which is aspartic acid so that's attached to the phosphate group so on the right starting from the right you have the gamma carbon which is CG attached to two oxygens and that forms the carboxylic group followed by the beta carbon which is CB and that's followed by the alpha carbon which is CA that's attached to a nitrogen and further to the left you have the side chain carbon with two carb oxygens attached to it and one of the oxygens is further attached to the phosphorus of the phosphate group so that's again attached to two other oxygens and down the line in the main chain you have another oxygen followed by a carbon and this whole group out here is the adenosine of the adenosine monophosphate so that's where the name comes from this is adenosine and that's monophosphate since this has a single phosphorus and in the adenosine molecule this portion this part here is the actually the base that has the heterocyclic nitrogen in it so the name of this base is adenine as you might recall from the lecture slides uh, that this is a particular base that's prominent in DNA and RNA nucleotide sequences so what we are going to do is now this molecule is highlighted in total so we are going to uh, remove the highlight we are going to deselect this molecule first which we can do by uh, going anywhere outside the molecule on the screen and just uh, press on control and left click so you see the highlight is gone here and we are just going to highlight or select this part of the molecule which is the uh, adenosine monophosphate part until here and uh, we'll have to be careful that we don't end up selecting this oxygen as well on the way so we're just going to align this molecule in a way so that the bond is prominently visible between the phosphorus and the oxygen and just like before we are going to press on control but this time we are going to hold on to the left mouse button so that a hand appears so after pressing on to control you hold on to the left mouse button and then just drag along to create a rectangle so you see the rectangular portion will actually highlight the part of the molecule that we are selecting so once you're satisfied that as you can see I have reached almost the end of the bond I'm going to release this so you see the highlighted portion in green just starts from here and then ends out here with the phosphorus bond ending with the oxygen out here so this oxygen these two oxygens or any other part of the molecule is not selected which is actually the aspartic acid so now we need to delete this fragment of the molecule we can do that by going to actions again and then atoms or bonds and then pressing on delete you might understand the difference between deleting a part of the molecule and hiding a part of the molecule so as you might recall uh, when we are hiding a part of the molecule 
it's not just displayed on the screen, but it's still existing there. But once we delete a part of the molecule, which means it's gone forever from the PDB. So once we delete this portion, this fragment, and then save the PDB again, this fragment will not exist. So let's go ahead and click on delete. There you go, it's gone. But there's another problem. So as you can see, this structure out here, the aspartic acid or the L-aspartic acid, as we may call it more specifically, is losing the hydrogens. So there's no hydrogen attached to this carbon and there's no hydrogens attached to the nitrogen. So these all should have a hydrogen attached to them. So we are going to select again uh, the residue AMO, which is still the residue name AMO, despite the portion of the molecule being deleted. Select this and we are going to add the hydrogens. The way to do it is go to the tools menu. So once you're in the tools menu, go to structure editing and the first option that you'll have here is add H. So once you click on that, you see it gives you an option to add the hydrogens. So there are a few options here, like uh, the method that you use using to add the hydrogen might be steric only or, uh, or you can consider all hydrogen bonds together, which is slightly slower, but it's worth it because it will take into consideration the environment and the atmosphere and get rid of the unnecessary clashes while building the hydrogens on top of the atoms. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you have the protonation state for the histidine molecules, uh, the histidine residues, sorry. So the histidine residues can have three different protonation states. One is the delta histidine, which means uh, that uh, a, nit uh, a hydrogen is uh, attached to the uh, delta nitrogen of the histidine base uh, and then you have uh, epsilon histidine which means a hydrogen would be attached to the epsilon nitrogen of the histidine residue and then you have HIP which is protonated histidine which means both the nitrogens would be protonated by two hydrogens but we don't bother about this because we are selecting only this part of the molecule which does not contain the histidine residue of the protein so we'll just go ahead and press OK and wait for it okay there you go as soon as you do do it you'll see that all the hydrogens are attached so there's one hydrogen attached to the nitrogen here and then there's one attached to this carbon here which is the alpha carbon and then you have another a couple of hydrogens attached to the beta carbon so this is all protonated and stuff uh, so what we are going to do here is first we'll save this structure alongside the receptor. I'll just show you in a minute that the receptor still exists. So now that we have this chunk of the molecule attached to the receptor with the adenosine phosphate monophosphate group gone, so we actually have now L-asp, that is L-aspartic acid attached to aspartyl tRNA synthetase. So we are going to deselect this portion and then go again to actions and ribbon, once we show the ribbon representation, you'll see the receptor exists here. So it's back in focus. So the only difference from the original structure that we opened initially with Chimera and the structure that we have now is that the adenosine monophosphate group is gone and we only have the L-aspartic acid. So we are going to go ahead and save it. File save PDB. We're going to give it a name since this is no more AMO. So we're going to give it a name like LASP underscore ASPRS dot PDB. And we are going to use the untransform coordinates. So save this and the PDB is saved in the specific directory. Now, once you have saved the PDB file for the L-ASP bound aspartyl tRNA synthetase, we have to do another operation where we will change the stereochemistry because we need uh, two uh, models of complexes. So one is the L-ASP bound ASPRS and the other one is the D-ASP bound ASPRS. So as you know that uh, stereochemically L-ASP is levorotatory, that's why it's called L-ASP, and D-ASP is dextrorotatory, which means 
that if you follow the corn rule as I have laid them out in the slides so the carbonyl group comes first followed by the uh, alkyl group and then the nitrogen group that comes in the clockwise direction so that's the L configuration and for the D configuration these uh, sequences of the functional groups uh, arise in an anti-clockwise manner so we'll just have a quick look at it so first of all we need to focus on this ligand again that's L aspartic acid first so in order to do that we'll again go to select or rather actions sorry and then uh, go to ribbon and hide the ribbon representation for the receptor there you go and then bring this ligand in focus by zooming into it and translating it and rotating it as much as possible according to your suitability and yeah as once you're happy once you're satisfied with it so we'll have a look at how to change this L asp to D asp the orientation which we must follow in order to have a proper assertion for the corn rule is basically having the carbon center which is the chiral carbon that's the C alpha carbon at the center and the nitrogen on the left to represent the L form the L enantiomeric or stereoisomeric form of the amino acid aspartic acid so as you can see we have almost gotten it in position like this is the C alpha carbon this is the nitrogen slightly on the left okay and so this is the carbonyl group or the carboxylic group and that's uh, if you go from here in the clockwise direction you have the carboxylic group first and then you have the alkyl group because this is a methyl group attached to the carboxylic group so this is an alkyl group or the R group and then you have the N so this is in the clockwise direction and we can confirm that this is actually the L configuration only. So in order to change it over to the D configuration, we have to move this nitrogen from the left to the right and interchange it with the hydrogen out here. So the hydrogen will move towards the left and the nitrogen will move towards the right. In order to achieve this, we have to go back to the structure editing tool, which is under the tools option. And we go to the structure editing option and there you have a number of other options and we select the build structure from there, from the pull down menu. And in the build structure interface, you have another pull down menu. If you pull it down and you have other options like modify structure, adjust bonds, adjust distortions. The one which we are looking for to select is invert. So once you select that option, you will come to a screen which will tell you that select one atom to swap with the smallest substituent bonded to that atom or select two atoms to swap those specific substituents. So you have to pick one atom out here to swap the two smallest substituents in between each other in terms of the number of atoms. So the two smallest substituents relative to the number of atoms are the hydrogen attached to this carbon alpha carbon and the nitrogen with the hydrogen attached to this alpha carbon. So the atom that we have to pick in order to you know uh, facilitate the swapping is the alpha carbon here. So once again if you press onto the control key on your keyboard and just hover over this alpha carbon and click on your left mouse button it will select this particular atom out here so the alpha carbon here is selected now we can go ahead and press the swap button and as soon as we do that you can see immediately these two smallest groups are swapped between each other so which means this is actually the D configuration if you press swap again it will go back to the L configuration of the amino acid. So since we want the D configuration and we want to save this D aspartic acid complex to that of ASPRS as a separate PDB, so we will facilitate the swapping, close this, deselect this alpha carbon, and you have the L configuration for the, uh, and sorry, you have the D configuration for the aspartic acid. So if you want to save this one as a separate PDB file of the complex so we'll again bring into focus uh, the ribbon representation for the uh, receptor that's ASPRS and then we'll select on file and save PDB and give it a special name so last time we gave 
uh, l asp underscore asparis so this time we have d asp underscore asparis dot pdb and we keep on using the untransformed coordinates despite these changes into a new pdb file of the complex with l asp uh, asparis and d asp asparis there are still potentially two uh, issues with the structure so the first being the chain ids so once you have uh, all the chain ids annotated as a here as in this case so you have the receptor as a and the ligand as a as well which means it's hard to distinguish between the receptor and the ligand and it's always advisable to have different chain ids for the receptor and the ligand uh, possibly a for the receptor and then b for the ligand because the ligand follows the receptor in the pdb file that's one of the problems and the second problem is the residue name so it still is amo we need an asp there that is a standard naming for the amino acid aspartic acid in uh, terms of the pdb the three letter code for the residue names of the pdb so there is no direct way of achieving this uh, change of residue name and change of chain id in chimera so in the next tutorial video that i'll have we'll look at how to change the chain ID and uh, the residue names in a program called PyMol, a very powerful program.